video is all about multiple sequence alignment so how to align multiple sequences you know and also how to refine the existing alignment by making use of the secondary structure the RNA molecule stru secondary structure or protein secondary structure will tremendously help us to improve the quality of the multiple sequence alignment also covered in this module is how to generate something called consensus sequence uh, we will first define what is this consensus sequence and what are the different methods to generate the consensus sequence. So in the previous video, we have seen multiple sequence alignment, right? From the blast search, we will download the sequences and then do a multiple sequence alignment to see the unique polymorphisms while auditing manually, auditing the base scores, isn't it? So what is this multiple sequence alignment is all about? It's nothing but a method to refer a series of algorithmic solution for alignment of three or more evolutionally related sequences, which can be DNA molecule or protein, that is amino acid sequences. So multiple sequence alignment is a hypothesis from which the homology can be inferred. So it's basically a hypothesis. So there is nothing like uh, uh, the gold standard, only this method works for the uh, multiple sequence alignment no it's all depends upon you and you know there is uh, nothing like a standard way to perform the sequence alignment of course you can try with the, uh, the cluster x or cluster w and then you can refine it manually and uh, you can try different options as well but there are actually good and bad points of the multiple sequence alignment so to align it you will have to choose a multiple sequence alignment from a set of sequences in your program for example, this is how the program Genius looks like. So in the Genius, you can see that, uh, you know, the multiple align, you just have to click after selecting the sequences that you would like to align. So as I told you in the last uh, video, you can download the related sequence from the GenBank and then click all the sequences along with your sequence, you know, the sequence of uh, uh, your uh, generated sequence that you would like to align with the uh, blast hits and then just click here multiples align and then the sequence will be aligned as you can see here this is not yet aligned so once you align it so you will get the alignment options so here you can see alignment is it global alignment or local alignment it depends upon you which method you want to align it if you uh, do not understand this concept, I suggest you to watch my last video uh, about the global and local alignments. And then cost matrix, this is all about the cost or the scoring pattern. So is it a 65% similarity or more or less? It all depends upon uh, how sensitive the alignment needs to be, right? And this option inside Genius is really good. It can automatically determine the sequence direction because sometimes uh, the, well, some sequences can never be aligned no matter whichever algorithm you use so the problem is simple because that the alignment is a reverse complement to you know the the, the complementary sequence can align it very well so the 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 read direction if you change it so if you reverse complement it can align it so this option if you uh, you know choose it inside algorithm so it can remarkably improve your alignment that is my experience as well so, and you can also choose this guide tree via alignment so it can actually make a, a guide tree as a heuristic method to find the optimal uh, search criterion and in the in the uh, genius you can see one option is genius alignment there are other options as well muscle alignment is an iterative manner in which you can actually iterative means that you are performing again and again to refine the alignment another option is cluster w it's a very well known uh, uh, sequence alignment algorithm right so or cluster x for the protein or realign the region translation align consensus align so there are so many different methods you can try out you know if uh, uh, alignment score was very less if i do with the genius alignment i can go with the muscle alignment and test it out why not alignment poses a lot of problems and challenges so the quality of alignment can be assessed by the percentage identity so if the identity is very low that means that many sequences are not being aligned properly so you would need to figure out which are the, the problematic uh, sequences so sometimes changing the read direction that is reverse complementing the sequence of the problematic sequence can significantly improve the alignment which I just told you about. So if a, if a sequence is really problematic the best option is to avoid it to all together to improve the alignment. So how do you refine the alignment? So alignments of the proteins and 
RNA molecules can be significantly improved by comparing the residues with the secondary structure. So if you don't have access to this uh, software like Genius, you can do it or in the website as well. So for example, 3D Coffee via Expresso, you know, you can uh, search for the 3D Coffee and you can do this um, uh, refining the alignment of structural uh, coding regions. For example, tRNA or uh, you know ribosomal RNA. So these have got secondary structure. So it can really improve with looking at the secondary structure. How does it work? So stem regions are expected to be more conserved than the loop region. That is the funda. So how, how why it is so? Because if one change happens in the stem region, you need to have a complementary change in the other region as well. So you need two mutations. Uh, if it's only one mutation, then the secondary structure is impacted, isn't it? So likelihood of having two kinds of mutation is lesser than just one mutation. So usually the stem regions are a lot more conserved than the loop region. So if something happens in the loop region, it doesn't have much impact on the secondary structure of the RRNA. You see the RRNA doesn't call for anything, right? It's only for the structure. So complementary substitution or compensatory substitutions in the stem regions bolster our alignment hypothesis. As I told you, alignment is nothing but a hypothesis. So you know you need argument to bolster it. So one good option is to find uh, compensatory mutations in the stem regions of the DNA RNA molecules. So for example, this is the secondary structure. You can see that there is actually stem region and loop region. So stem region are uh, internally base pair is happening. It's basically a single stranded uh, nucleotide molecule. It's, it's nothing but an rRNA molecule. So you can see that there are a lot of stem region and for the stem region, you know, there is actually a base pair happens. So if it one changes, then other nucleotide has to be uh, changed as well. So you need two mutations. So hairpin loop region, you re really don't need to have it. So so the, so as the junction or multi loop region but bulge loop region also is not a problem but the stem region is the 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 main issues right so there are several of these re interior loop or single stranded regions uh, don't have any problem but the stem regions it's going to be a problem with the mutation so you need to have uh, compensatory mutations so one of the example here is this is one uh, you know the RNA molecule here you can see that stem region as well as the loop regions you know. So non-coding RNA evolution is constrained by its secondary structure. So there is a constraint on the evolutionary part. So drastic sequence changes cannot be tolerated. Compensatory mutations are very common. One base pair mutates into another base pair. It's not just base, but a pair of the bases, right? So one base pair mutates to another base pair. So it doesn't change the secondary structure. One example is that this molecule, just have a look at this molecule. So here you can see that this, uh, you know, the, this color UUGC. So if something changes the U, then G also needs to be changed to have this kind of stru secondary structure with uh, this, uh, you know, stem region. Here is one example here, the same region you can see that here in this figure as well, right? So if this is changed G to G, so it, it needs to be changed at this region as well because this uh, changes with this, right? There will be a internal base pair is happening. For example, here this region, this stem region is this, this one to this one. So if something changes here, it needs to be changed in this region as well for this is nothing but two tRNA molecules. So in this tRNA, if something changes, this another tRNA also needs to have two mutations, not just one mutation. So this is what you call the compensatory mutation. So this, uh, this kind of compensatory mutation uh, can significantly improve, you know, your alignment hypothesis. So as you can see, the alignment score is given here pairwise identity. So in this uh, nucleotide alignment, the score is 92.1 percentage, which is quite high. So always aim to get the very high pairwise identity in the alignments. So in the multiple sequence alignment, the workflow is very simple. First step is to get the sequences. For example, you can download from the BLAST search or you can search uh, in the N, uh, you know, uh, nucleotide database of the NCBI or the GenPank uh, database, right? For example, ITS1 from different plant species, you can get the sequence. Second step is to align the sequence. So introduce the gaps wherever necessary, right? The gaps are for 
uh, indels, right? So you can do it manually, but um, nobody does in the first step manual sequence alignment, right? So it's always better to go with uh, a software uh, algorithm based alignment the first step. Then you can refine it by eye, you know, that is manual uh, refinement. So cluster W or cluster X or muscle alignment, all this you can use. Cluster X is for the protein, while cluster W2 is for the nucleotide. So uh, to do that with the mega, that is a freeware. First you open the mega, then align, then query the data bank. So we'll get the 18S. So this example, you can try that using the mega, right? 18S are DNA sequence from the following. Please do it. That's the best way to learn how to use this alignment inside the mega. So try to get 18S from human, mouse, then rice and Arabidopsis, nothing but plants, then penicillium fungi and plasmodium protozoa. So all these organisms get the 18S. That is the first step. Then select the required sequences and click add to alignment button. So this is an internal uh, browser within the mega, right? You really don't have to download all the sequences. You can simply click on this radio button and add to alignment. Then click on the organism panel and filter the result to target out, right? So basically, if you simply search for 18S and human, even mouse might come in the search result. You know, that is why NCBA result is search is not that powerful like the Google. And uh, to refine it further, you can always choose the organism panel. You can, you know, you can um, forcefully, you can tell the software to limit your search only for the human being. And you, it's always better to prioritize the complete sequence over the partial. Some sequences are labeled partial, while some others are labeled uh, complete. So it's always better to choose a complete sequence rather than the partial one. And you can do the same thing for the rest of the target OTUs. OTU is nothing but operational taxonomic units. For example, species or genus, whichever the study that you are doing. So as you can see, the step two is query data bank. This is how to perform a query inside the mega, which is a freeware, freeware software. And then uh, once you get this screen, you just have to click on this, uh, you know, the radio button and then simply click on to this add to alignment. As you can see here, both are partial sequence, right? So sometimes it is complete sequence. It's always better to choose a complete sequence over the partial sequence. So this is how to filter the organism. On the right, you can see Homo sapiens. So if I click it, only the sequences from the homo sapiens will be presented to you. So that is, I strongly recommend to do that option as well. So finally, you will have all the sequences downloaded, but still not aligned. As you can see, this sequence is highly chaotic. It's not aligned. How do you know that? So because you see the color, this column, if you look, it's nothing is same. So usually in a good alignment, each column should have the same kind of nucleotide uh, base sequences or the same color. Right? Usually alignments are color coded. All this you can refine by clicking the, uh, you know, view options of your uh, alignment explorer window. So next step is of course to align these sequences. To align it, click here alignment, then align by cluster W, or you can also go with codon align with cluster W, or align by muscle or muscle codon. All these options you can choose it. If you click cluster W, then these are the options tab you're getting. So the DNA, uh, the weight matrix, you can d d try different weight matrix as well. So if you can use the negative matrix, uh, you can simply choose OK as well. The default op option, you can simply accept it. Then you will see uh, aligned region. Now it is aligned, more or less each column represent, uh, you know, for example, the first column, it's mostly C right so it has already been aligned and the gaps have been introduced wherever necessary so this is how to perform the alignment inside the genus so now what is in genus or the mega so what is consensus sequence consensus sequence is nothing but calculated order of the most frequent residues at each position of the sequence alignment so sequence alignment will have different positions so which is the most oftenly found region so that is uh, the the uh, Calculated order is what you call as consensus sequence. So consensus sequence generate the final sequence of the target loci from a set of contact. So you remember my video about the contact. So I have already explained this, uh, you know, the uh, walk, the genome walk, right? Or the shotgun sequencing. So contact one, contact two, it is aligned at the overlapping region and then contact three. So, so it actually jumps from one sequence to another then stitch 
to the, the third one. So together they form the consensus sequence. So it is nothing but calculated order. So consensus sequence is the final sequence of the target loci from a set of contexts. So for example, forward and reverse, sometimes multiple rates combine to form the full sequence. Even, uh, you know, it has internal rates also, you know, of course, you can try with internal rates, uh, regions of the same gene to increase the statistical uh, support for your alignment or context sequence. So most often consensus sequences are generated based upon highest quality. For example, a position uh, in the overlapping context has an ambiguity. One region says A with 79% HQ. HQ is high quality index. While the second context says G with 71% HQ, then the highest one is A, right? 79 is higher than 71% then the consensus program will label it as A. So that option works very well. For example, in this image, you can see that, you know, generate consensus sequence. So this is how to generate a consensus sequence from a sequence assembly. So this one is nothing but an assembly. I right click and click consensus sequence. So while making it, there are many options are coming here. So generate consensus sequence uh, option window will come. Is it highest quality or, uh, you know, the majority rule 0% or 50% or 99 95% majority rule that is just like the election you see the majority whoever majority uh, whichever is the majority in a region then it calls as a majority so what forms a majority is it 50% majority simple majority in the parliamentary democracy or is it 99% uh, majority you know so cutoff value you can manually adjust or you can simply choose the highest quality uh, the HQ percentage score. So this is really a good option inside the genius. So highest quality and then assign quality to the highest and click OK. So that actually gives rise to a consensus sequence. So resulting sequence is no more an alignment, you know, no more an assembly. It is just a simple sequence. And this sequence you can uh, upload to the gen bank if you like. So in summary, the quality of the multiple sequence alignment would have tremendous impact on the phylogenetic tree topology. Yet, the topic is often overlooked. Alignments of the structural RNA and proteins can be significantly improved by looking for compensatory mutations. You know, the mutations in one region of the loop regions of the st uh, structural RNA, it needs, it necessitates the mutation in another region as well. 